The Toyota Way. 14 Management Principles from the World's Greatest Manufacturer. By Jeffrey Liker. President of Liker Lean Advisors. Principle number 7. Visual Control. The 4P model consists of Number 1. Philosophy. Long-term systems thinking. Number 2. Process. Struggle to flow value to each customer. Number 3. People. Respect, challenge, and grow them. Number 4. Problem solving. Think scientifically to improve towards a desired future. The seven principles of process improvement. Create continuous process flow. Use pull systems. Level out the workload. Standardized processes. Design build in quality. Use visual controls. Technology to support people and processes. This video discusses the seventh principle. Use visual control to support people in decision making and problem solving. We can take in information through our five senses. See, hear, touch, smell, and taste. We are incredible at remembering pictures. Hear a piece of information, and three days later you'll remember 10% of it. Add a picture and you'll remember 65%. Pictures beat text as well. In part because reading is so inefficient for us. Our brain sees words as lots of tiny pictures, and we have to identify certain features in the letters to be able to read them. That takes time. So rather than fight our natural human tendencies, Toyota has chosen to build on them. Toyota has made an art form out of visual management. In Japan, there are 5S programs that comprise a series of activities for eliminating wastes that contribute to errors, defects, and injuries in the workplace. Here are the 5S's translated into English. 1. Sort. Sort through items and keep only what is needed while disposing of what is not. 2. Straighten, or orderliness. A place for everything and everything in its place. 3. Shine, or cleanliness. The cleaning process often acts as a form of inspection that exposes abnormal and pre-failure conditions that could hurt quality or cause machine failure. 4. Standardize. Develop systems and procedures to maintain and monitor the first three S's. 5. Sustain, or self-discipline. Maintaining a stabilized workplace is an ongoing process of continuous improvement as conditions change. The five S's create a continuous process for improving the work environment. Visual control of a well-planned lean system is different from making a mass production operation look neat and shiny. Lean systems use 5S to support a smooth flow to tact. Visual control is any communication device used in the work environment that tells us at a glance how work should be done and whether it is deviating from the standard. In the broadest sense, Visual control refers to the design of just-in-time information of all types to ensure fast and proper execution of operations and processes. Visual control goes beyond capturing deviations from a target or goal on charts and graphs and posting them publicly. Visual controls at Toyota are integrated into the process of the value-added work. The visual aspect means being able to look at a process, a piece of equipment, inventory, information, or a worker performing a job and immediately see the standard being used to perform the task and if there is a deviation from the standard. Mr. Ono was passionate about TPS. He said you must clean up everything so you can see problems. He would complain if he could not look and see and tell if there is a problem.
Thank you for watching and listening. The Toyota Way. 14 Management Principles from the World's Greatest Manufacturer. By Jeffrey Liker. President of Liker Lean Advisors. Principle number 8. Technology to support people and processes. The 4P model consists of. Number 1. Philosophy. Long-term systems thinking. Number 2. Process. Struggle to flow value to each customer. Number 3. People. Respect, challenge, and grow them. Number 4. Problem solving. Think scientifically to improve towards a desired future. The 7 Principles of Process Improvement. Create continuous process flow. Use pull systems. Level out the workload. Standardized processes. Design build in quality. Use visual controls. Technology to support people and processes. The last process principle of the Toyota Way's 4P model is. Adopt and adapt technology that supports your people and processes. In 1991. Toward the end of the Japanese bubble economy, Toyota launched the Lexus LS400 with the most advanced automation in the company at its plant in Tahara, Japan. When the investment bubble burst, vehicle sales declined. The plant was criticized for its high capital investment, which was a high fixed cost burden for Toyota. Typically, in downturns, the company reduces labor costs by eliminating overtime, reducing the temporary labor pool, and redeploying people to work on Kaizen. But fixed capital cannot be temporarily removed. After the Tahara experience, Toyota's principles of production equipment became simple, slim, and flexible. The real message is pulling the technology based on the opportunity instead of pushing the technology because it is the latest fad and streamline processes that can be improved with little investment before introducing expensive technology any information technology must meet the acid test of supporting people and processes and prove it adds value before it is implemented broadly toyota successfully used paper kanban for many years it has the advantage that it is tactile and physically travels with the containers of parts so you can see at a glance whether it is present or absent. On the other hand, Toyota switched some years ago to electronic Kanban, though there is also a parallel system of paper Kanban to be scanned and disposed of. The point of using various kinds of artifacts is for people to easily visualize whether the process is in or out of standard as they do the work. When combined with the ingenuity of highly developed people motivated toward the goals of serving the customer and helping the company, technology can multiply Kaizen, faster and better. Bill Gates says, The first rule of any technology used in a business is that automation applied to an efficient operation will magnify the efficiency. The second is that automation applied to an inefficient operation will magnify the inefficiency. Thank you for watching and listening.
The Toyota Way. 14 Management Principles from the World's Greatest Manufacturer. By Jeffrey Liker. President of Liker Lean Advisors. Principle number 9. Grow leaders who thoroughly understand the work live the philosophy, and teach it to others. The 4P model consists of. Number 1. Philosophy. Long-term systems thinking. Number 2. Process. Struggle to flow value to each customer. Number 3. People. Respect, challenge, and grow them. Number 4. Problem solving. Think scientifically to improve towards a desired future. Respect, challenge, and grow your people and partners toward a vision of excellence. Out of the 14 principles, people principles consist of 1. Grow leaders. 2. Develop people and teams. 3. Partner with value chain. This video discusses the ninth principle of the Toyota way. Grow leaders who thoroughly understand the work live the philosophy, and teach it to others. At Toyota, the new president does not need to come in and take charge to move the company in a radically new direction or put his imprint on the company. Toyota does not go shopping for superstar CEOs and presidents because its leaders must live and thoroughly understand the Toyota culture. It seems that throughout Toyota's history, key leaders were found within the company, at the right time, to shape the next step in Toyota's evolution. Toyota expects its leaders to teach their subordinates the Toyota way which means they must first understand and live the philosophy. Edgar Schein, one of the gurus of culture, defines culture as a pattern of shared basic assumptions learned by a group as it solved its problems of external adaptation and internal integration. A product of joint learning. It is leaders who model the cultural norms and values and encourage adoption of the deeply held beliefs by others through their consistent example. Mutual dependence, an obligation to help others, and the determination to reach a goal together are all basic assumptions of Japanese life. Toyota leaders are taught that team members are rarely to blame for an error but rather there is usually something about the system that allowed the error to occur. Respect starts with treating people fairly and as part of the team, but goes beyond that to challenging people to grow. Toyota identified 10 core competencies foundational to the official performance evaluation system for all management levels that are part of Toyota's global appraisal process. 1. Accurate grasp of the situation. Dig deep. Go and see. Listen. Use facts and data. 2. Open and innovative thinking by seeing and leading beyond the status quo. 3. Develop and lead improvement activities through target mid to long-term goals. 4. Make appropriate decisions by carefully considering the business situation. 5. Constantly practice perseverance. 6. Allocate and adjust resources based on priorities. 7. Establish and improve the business framework and systems. 8. Consistent and fair assignments and performance reviews. 9. Thorough and fair staff development. 10. Achieving personal mission. Aligned with company values. President of Toyota. 
Akio Toyoda, says. Job titles are unimportant. In the end, the people who know the Gemba, where the actual work is done, are the most respected. The Toyota Way. 14 Management Principles from the World's Greatest Manufacturer. By Jeffrey Liker, President of Liker Lean Advisors. Principle number 10. Develop exceptional people and teams who follow your company's philosophy. The 4P model consists of. Number 1. Philosophy. Long-term systems thinking. Number 2 process struggle to flow value to each customer number three people respect challenge and grow them number four problem solving think scientifically to improve towards a desired future respect challenge and grow your people and partners toward a vision of excellence out of the 14 principles People principles consist of 1. Grow leaders 2. Develop people and teams 3. Partner with value chain This video discusses the 10th principle of the Toyota way. Develop exceptional people and teams who follow your company's philosophy. Toyota naturally adopted servant leadership early in its history based on the common sense notion that the only people doing value-added work are the workers, and therefore they are at the top. What really matters is making improvements at the Gemba, and the team members are the ones at the Gemba, personally experiencing the processes and living with the equipment. Toyota needs team members to be observing, thinking, and experimenting. While work experience in technical skills is helpful, the ability to work in teams, and most of all to learn to think critically and solve problems, is more important. Toyota believes it can develop these people to be exceptional. Work groups and the mysterious team leader role. Toyota's view of the role of the leader is quite different. It is not to discipline and react to problems but rather to plan, lead by example, and coach. One person cannot effectively coach dozens of people. Toyota's ideal standard is a 4 to 1 ratio. That is, 4 team members for each team leader, and 4 team leaders for one group leader. Though in reality there is variation in group size. Group leaders the most challenging role in Toyota UK plant. People like to refer to group leaders as the managing directors of their own business. The group leader has many responsibilities, from planning the day for the teams, to coordinating launches of newly designed vehicles, to developing and working toward an annual plan for improvement through the Hoshin Conry process. Each work group has its own meeting area on the shop floor next to the group's work processes. This is the place for daily briefings before the shift starts, as well as the place for breaks, lunch, and a lot of informal interaction. Toyota leaders are firmly committed to respect for people and job security. It is non-negotiable. Toyota, with an improvement mindset, has evolved systems to support job security over time, not just because the leaders are nice people, but because job security becomes a design constraint. If a cultural assumption is that both long-term employment and cost competitiveness are necessary for survival, 
then there is little choice but to find creative ways to do both. The principle remains the same. Establish mutual trust between management and team members and construct a win-win partnership. If team members think management is playing games it is over. Respect for people and constant challenging to do better. Are these contradictory? Respect for people means respect for the mind and capability. You do not expect them to waste their time. You respect the capability of the people. Mutual respect and trust mean I trust and respect that you will do your job so that we are successful as a company. It does not mean we just love each other. Thank you for watching and listening. The Toyota Way. 14 Management Principles from the World's Greatest Manufacturer. By Jeffrey Liker. President of Liker Lean Advisors. Principle 11. Respect your value chain partners by challenging them and helping them improve. The 4P model consists of Number 1. Philosophy. Long-term systems thinking. Number 2. Process. Struggle to flow value to each customer. Number 3. People. Respect, challenge, and grow them. Number 4. Problem solving. Think scientifically to improve towards a desired future. Respect, challenge, and grow your people and partners toward a vision of excellence. Out of the 14 principles, people principles consist of 1. Grow leaders, 2. Develop people and teams, 3. Partner with value chain. This video discusses the 11th principle of the Toyota way. Respect your value chain partners by challenging them and helping them improve. Toyota carries respect for people and continuous improvement to the value chain, challenging and developing its key outside partners. From the customer's perspective, it is a Toyota vehicle and so all supplied parts have to be of the same quality of design and function as Toyota parts. Similarly, independent dealers are still viewed as Toyota by consumers, and they must reflect the Toyota brand. Auto industry suppliers consistently report that Toyota is their best customer, and also their toughest. In Toyota's case, it means it has very high standards of excellence and expects all its partners to rise to those standards. More importantly, it will help all its partners rise to those standards. Toyota has a variety of ways to develop suppliers, including regional supplier associations, direct support from knowledgeable professionals in purchasing, quality, and manufacturing and model line projects coached by master TPS trainers. Despite the pressure of Toyota challenges and high standards, suppliers typically rate Toyota the most trusted and respected customer. Suppliers typically react positively to Toyota's demanding but fair partnership approach. This is what an automotive supplier says about Toyota. Toyota is more hands-on and more driven to improving their own systems and then showing how that improves you. Toyota will do things like level their production systems to make it easier on you. Toyota picks up our product 12 times per day. They helped move presses, moved where we get the water from, trained our employees. On the commercial side they are very hands-on also, they come in and measure and work to get cost out of the system. There is more opportunity to make profit at Toyota.
we started with Toyota when we opened a Canadian plant with one component and, as performance improved, we were rewarded, so now we have almost the entire cockpit. Relative to all car companies we deal with, Toyota is the best. Toyota has developed a version of its Toyota Way document for sales and service and rights. Set up dealer networks for pleasure, convenience, and high value and provide integrated 3S services, sales, spare parts and service. Engaging in direct communication with customers to develop a long-term relationship. Toyota long ago developed a version of the Toyota production system for dealers, but it does not impose it. It offers it and teaches it. Toyota developed the system and certified a network of consultants to teach it by helping the dealer set it up. The dealer pays for the consultant, but then when the dealer has achieved a milestone, it is reimbursed by Toyota. In the book, Jeffrey Liker developed a value chain needs hierarchy that can extend up and down the value stream. The value chain needs hierarchy suggests that until the relationship has stabilized to the point where the business relationship is fair, processes are stable, and expectations are clear, it is impossible to get to the higher levels of enabling systems and truly learning together as an enterprise. What really cements Toyota as the model for value stream management is its approach to learning and growing together with its partners. It has achieved the highest form of the lean enterprise, an extended learning enterprise. Taiichi Ono said, Achievement of business performance by the parent company through bullying suppliers is totally alien to the spirit of the Toyota production system. The Toyota Way. 14 Management Principles from the World's Greatest Manufacturer. By Jeffrey Liker. President of Liker Lean Advisors. Principle 12. Observe deeply and learn iteratively. PDCA. To meet each challenge. The 4P model consists of. Number 1. Philosophy. Long-term systems thinking. Number 2 process struggle to flow value to each customer number three people respect challenge and grow them number four problem solving think scientifically to improve towards a desired future the toyota way problem solving principles consist of observe deeply and learn iteratively pdca align goals Bold strategy, large leaps and small steps. This video discusses the 12th principle of the Toyota Way. Observe deeply and learn iteratively, PDCA, to meet each challenge. Long gone are the days when a company could set up shop, make a product or offer a service well, and then milk that product for years hanging on to its original competitive advantage. Adaptation, innovation, and flexibility have knocked this old business approach off its pedestal and have become necessary ingredients for survival as well as the hallmarks of a successful business. To sustain such organizational behavior requires an essential attribute, the ability to learn.
training our brain to accept uncertainty and creatively test ideas to overcome unexpected obstacles as we discover them as a fundamental skill in today's complex, rapidly changing world. Taiichi Ono emphasized that true problem solving requires identifying root cause rather than source. The root cause lies hidden beyond the source. Ono admonished his students to observe the production floor without preconceptions and with a blank mind. Repeat why five times to every matter. The real lesson was not to ask why a specific number of times but to get facts and somehow wipe away preconceptions of both what is happening and what we assume is the solution. Armed with the information from the computer systems, people can arguably be more intentional about what they look for at the Gemba. Digital tools can be blunt instruments if the human using the information is not thinking scientifically and solving real problems. Toyota is developing in people a way of thinking to clearly understand the direction. Go and see and ask why to deeply understand the current condition. And experiment and learn on your way to the goal. This can be thought of as practical scientific thinking. President Fujio Cho introduced Toyota Business Practices TBP, which, on the surface, was an eight-step problem-solving process. But Cho did not set out to create a rigid problem-solving method that always has to be followed. Rather his intention was to provide a framework for developing Toyota way thinking through practice on real-world problems. The steps of TBP, along with the drive and dedication the coach is trying to instill, can be summarized as 1 clarify the problem. This starts with a big challenge that is appropriate for the person leading the activity and learning TBP. Then, the learner must grasp the current condition. Finally, the learner defines the ideal condition. In this step, there is no root cause analysis because the gap is too large and multifaceted. 2. Break down the problem to a set of sub-problems. The learner goes to the Gemba to learn and break down the problem into smaller, more tractable problems, and prioritizes, selecting one to start. 3. Set a target for the prioritized subproblem. 4. Analyze the root cause for the prioritized subproblem. This is not to be done by asking why five times in a conference room. Go to the Gemba and thoroughly investigate the process involved based on actual facts. 5. Develop countermeasures. The learner should think creatively, beyond preconceived ideas or one's own position. It is also critical at this stage to engage key stakeholders and work to build consensus. 6. See countermeasures through. This is a collaborative process with those directly affected by the change as well as about informing, reporting, and consulting key stakeholders outside that group. 7. Monitor both results and processes. Learn from the success and failure of the countermeasures and the effectiveness of the process you used. 8. Standardize successful processes. The learner is not done until these become the new way of operating and the new processes are shared with other people across the company who might benefit. For team members to experience the entire life cycle of problem solving, Toyota uses quality circles. Quality circles were introduced in Toyota in the 1960s as part of total quality control, but evolved to addressing any problem, quality, productivity, safety, or any other goal. The team members decide on the goal. This is not an exercise in return on investment but rather focuses on developing team member thinking through coaching and practice.
people change their habitual ways of thinking by deliberately practicing new ways, initially with some simple practice routines. These routines are known in Japanese as kata. The improvement kata model represents a practical, everyday way of thinking scientifically. It emphasizes the underlying pattern of thinking. The improvement kata is not intended to replace problem-solving methods, but to teach a fundamental scientific pattern of thinking with the result that any method will be used in a more effective way. This figure represents an intuitive visual summary of the desired pattern. 1. Set the direction or challenge. The challenge, usually set by management, may often seem out of reach, maybe even impossible, and thus forces the learner to break down the problem and learn through shorter-term target conditions. It is typically six months to one year out. 2. Grasp the current condition. Where are we now in relation to the challenge? 3. Establish your next target condition. Based on the learner's initial grasp of the current condition, the target condition is a shorter-term next goal that is a significant step beyond the current condition on the way to the challenge. It includes a target, outcome metric, and a condition, desired process characteristics, or operating pattern, and a process metric. This is typically one to four weeks out. 4. Experiment. Test one factor at a time if possible, predicting what will happen running the experiment, and reflecting on what you learn. Repeat rapid cycles of PDCA until you reach the target condition, set your next target condition, and continue toward the challenge. Coaching Kata helps the coach to get engaged with a five-question starter kata. These are nested questions beginning with the target condition and actual condition, and on the flip side are questions to reflect on the last experiment that the learner has run. Problem solving is central to the Toyota way. A plan leads to direction and to a series of hypotheses, which are each tested through experiments. In this way, we are learning and extending our threshold of knowledge step by step. The Toyota production system itself embodies the learning cycle of Plan Do Check Act. In the plan stage, you develop a vision of One Piece Flow, something to strive for. Then, in the Do stage, you experiment and learn in the direction of the targets in the roof. Jadoka is the check, comparing the actual to the target to surface problems, including unexpected problems arising from the changes you made. The foundation is where we standardize the new practices with the goal of developing new routines. And the cycle repeats. Kiichiro Toyota, Toyota Motor Company founder said, Humans come up with a surprising number of useless ideas. When you actually try them out, the ones you thought were good ideas sometimes prove to be unexpectedly useless and the ones you thought were bad ideas sometimes turn out to be unexpectedly good. This is the principle that practice is number one. Thank you for watching and listening. Learning to lead at Toyota. Toyota's famous production system makes great cars, and with them great managers. Here's how one American hotshot learned to replicate Toyota's DNA.
Toyota has repeatedly outperformed its competitors in quality, reliability, productivity, cost reduction, sales and market share growth, and market capitalization. Toyota has been so widely studied and copied. However, so few companies been able to match its performance. Part of the problem is that most outsiders have focused on Toyota's tools and tactics, Kanban, pole systems, cords, production cells, and the like, and not on its basic set of operating principles. These principles lead to ongoing improvements in reliability, flexibility, safety, and efficiency, and, hence, market share and profitability. Toyota's real achievement is not merely the creation and use of the tools themselves. It is in making all its work a series of nested, ongoing experiments. Toyota Production System TPS, is a system of nested experiments through which operations are constantly improved. It is one thing to realize that the Toyota Production System TPS, is a system of nested experiments through which operations are constantly improved. It is another to have an organization in which employees and managers at all levels in all functions are able to live those principles and teach others to apply them. The story describes how a talented young American, hired for an upper-level position at one of Toyota's U.S. plants, was initiated into the TPS. His training was hardly what he might have expected, given his achievements. Rather than undergo a brief period of cursory walkthroughs, orientations, and introductions that an incoming fast-track executive might expect, he learned TPS the long, hard way, by practicing it, which is how Toyota trains any new employee regardless of rank or function. It would take more than three months before he even arrived at the plant in which he was to be a manager. Our American hotshot, whom we'll call Bob Dallas, arrived at the company thinking that he already knew the basics of TPS, having borrowed ideas from Toyota to improve operations in his previous job, and would simply be fine-tuning his knowledge to improve operations at his new assignment. The integration program. Takahashi ushered Dallas to his car and proceeded to drive not to the plant where Dallas was to eventually work but to another Toyota engine plant where Dallas would begin his integration into the company. That integration was to involve 12 intensive weeks in the U.S. engine plant and 10 days working and making observations in Toyota and Toyota supplier plants in Japan. Bob Dallas's first assignment at the U.S. engine plant was to help a small group of 19 engine assembly workers improve labor productivity, operational availability of machines and equipment, and ergonomic safety. For the first six weeks, Takahashi engaged Dallas in cycles of observing and changing individuals' work processes thereby focusing on productivity and safety. Working with the group's leaders, team leaders, and team members, Dallas would document, for instance, how different tasks were carried out, who did what tasks under what circumstances, and how information, material, and services were communicated. He would make changes to try to solve the problems he had observed and then evaluate those changes. On Mondays, Dallas would explain the following. How he thought the assembly process worked, based on his previous week's observations and experiences. What he thought the line's problems were. What changes he and the others had implemented or had in mind to solve those problems. And the expected impact of his recommendations. On Fridays, Takahashi reviewed what Dallas had done. 
comparing actual outcomes with the plans and expectations they had discussed on Monday. In the first six weeks, 25 changes were implemented to individual tasks. Worker productivity and ergonomic safety had improved significantly. The group was able to use 15 people instead of 19 to accomplish the same amount of work. Unfortunately, the changes had also reduced the operational availability of the machines. After Dallas had improved the human tasks in the assembly line, Takahashi had him switch to studying how the machines worked. This took another six weeks, with Takahashi and Dallas again meeting on Mondays and Fridays. Takahashi had Dallas, holder of two master's degrees in engineering, watch individual machines until they faulted so that he could investigate causes directly. direct observation of the devices, root cause analysis of each fault, and immediate reconguration to remove suspected causes raised operational availability to 90%, a substantial improvement though still below the 95% target that Takahashi had set for Dallas. After 12 weeks at the U.S. engine plant, Takahashi judged that Dallas had made progress in observing people and machines and in structuring countermeasures as experiments to be tested. However, Takahashi was concerned that Dallas still took too much of the burden on himself for making changes and that the rate at which he was able to test and refine improvements was too slow. He decided it was time to show Dallas how Toyota practiced improvements on its home turf. He and Dallas flew to Japan. Dallas's first three days were spent working at Toyota's famous Kamigo engine plant, where Teichi Ono, one of the main architects of TPS, had developed many of his major innovations. On the morning of their arrival, Takahashi unleashed the first of several surprises. Dallas was to work in a production cell to reduce the overburden on the worker alongside an employee who could not speak English, and no translator was provided, so the two had to learn to communicate through the physical environment and through models, drawings, and role-playing. Dallas's target was to make 50 improvements, actual changes in how work was done during his time there. This worked out to be one change every 22 minutes, not the one per day he had been averaging in his first five weeks of training. Dallas applied the approach he had learned at the U.S. engine plant. On day one, he spent the first three hours observing his new workmate. By the shift's end proudly reported that he had seven ideas, four of which he and his workmate had implemented. Takahashi unleashed his next surprise. He told Dallas that two Japanese team leaders who were going through the same training, people with jobs far less senior than the one for which Dallas was being prepared, had generated 28 and 31 change ideas, respectively, within the same amount of time. Somewhat humbled, Dallas picked up the pace, looking for more opportunities to make improvements and trying even more, quick and dirty, methods of testing ideas. By 11 a.m. on the second day, he and his co-worker had built the list to 25 ideas. By the time the three days were up, he had identified 50 problems with quality checks, tool changes, and other work in his machine shop, 35 of which had been fixed on the spot. Takahashi spent the remaining week showing him how Toyota group leaders, 
people responsible for a few assembly or machining teams, each with three to seven members, managed and presented their improvement projects. Dallas quickly realized that people at all levels, even those subordinate to the one for which he was being developed, were expected to structure work and improvements as experiments. To see if Dallas had learned the right lessons from his training, Takahashi sent him back to the U.S. engine plant where his instruction had begun. As we have seen, Dallas had already helped make substantial improvements in the assembly line's labor productivity and ergonomic safety before going to Japan. But he hadn't been able to raise operational availability to 95%. With Takahashi's help, Dallas worked with the line's group leader and assistant manager in order to develop the problem-solving skills of the line's team members and team leaders. The point was for the team to learn to solve little problems simultaneously so that the line could recover quickly when problems occurred. Dallas sat down with the group leader and assistant manager and set out a schedule for identifying specific problems and allocating responsibility for them across the team. As the team members observed and developed countermeasures, Dallas would drop by much as Takahashi had done, asking them specific questions that would oblige them to observe their allotted problems more closely as they happened. To its delight, the group, hit its mark ahead of schedule and raised operational availability to 99%. Although Takahashi at no point told Dallas exactly what he was supposed to learn from his experience, the methodology of the training just described is so consistent and specific that it reveals at least four fundamental principles underlying the system. The following lessons may help explain why Toyota has remained the world's preeminent manufacturer. Lesson 1. There's no substitute for direct observation. Throughout Dallas's training, he was required to watch employees work and machines operate. He was asked not to figure out why a machine had failed, as if he were a detective solving a crime already committed but to sit and wait until he could directly observe its failure, to wait for it to tell him what he needed to know. Direct observation is essential, and no combination of indirect methods, however clever, can possibly take its place. Lesson 2. Proposed changes should always be structured as experiments. In the scientific method, Experiments are used to test a hypothesis, and the results are used to refine or reject the hypothesis. Dallas's problem-solving was structured so that he embedded explicit and testable assumptions in his analysis of the work. Throughout his training, therefore, he had to explain gaps between predicted and actual results. He had to present his changes as tests of causal relationships, stating the problem he saw, the root cause he suspected, the change he had made, and the countermeasure's actual effect on performance. Lesson 3. Workers and managers should experiment as frequently as possible. At Toyota, the focus is on many quick, simple experiments rather than on a few lengthy, complex ones. In Japan, Dallas had to make 50 changes in two shifts, which meant an average of one change every 22 minutes. This encouraged him to learn from making small incremental changes rather than large system design changes. This is precisely the way Toyota workers practice process improvement. They cannot practice making a change, because a change can be made only once. 
but they can practice the process of observing and testing many times. Lesson 4. Managers should coach, not fix. Dallas's training not only gave him insight into how Toyota delivers continuous improvement, but also helped him understand the unique relationships between Toyota's managers and workers. What he saw at Toyota was workers and low-level managers constantly solving problems. Dallas came out of his training realizing that improving actual operations was not his job, it was the job of the workers themselves. His role was to help them understand that responsibility and enable them to carry it out. His training taught him how to construct work as experiments, which would yield continuous learning and improvements, and to teach others to do the same. TPS is a system you have to live to fully understand, let alone improve. The organization that applies the rules in designing its operations and that trains its managers to apply those rules will have made a good start at replicating the DNA of the Toyota production system. Thank you for watching and listening. The Toyota Way. 14 Management Principles from the World's Greatest Manufacturer. By Jeffrey Liker. President of Liker Lean Advisors. Principle 13. Focus the improvement energy of your people through aligned goals at all levels. The 4P model consists of Number 1. Philosophy. Long-term systems thinking. Number 2. Process. Struggle to flow value to each customer. Number 3. People. Respect, challenge, and grow them. Number 4. Problem solving. Think scientifically to improve towards a desired future. The Toyota Way Problem Solving Principles consist of Observe deeply and learn iteratively, PDCA Align goals Bold strategy Large leaps and small steps This video discusses the 13th principle of the Toyota Way. Focus the improvement energy of your people through aligned goals at all levels. Continuous improvement based on problems that pop up can accomplish a good deal. But to get everyone involved in continuous improvement in a way that adds up to huge corporate improvements requires aligned goals and objectives and daily measurement of progress toward those objectives. By 1960 then TPS was spread across Toyota plants, and quality at the plant level was good. But senior executives wanted excellent, and they realized it was necessary to develop aligned quality improvement plans vertically and horizontally across the company. The leaders are connected through interlocking goals and plans, and the ability to achieve results is as strong as the weakest link so leadership development must be a priority. Hoshin Kunri is as much a process of developing people and culture as it is a tool for deploying strategy and getting results. The overall flow of the annual Hoshin process is summarized in this diagram. Hoshin planning starts at the top of the organization with an environmental scan and a strategic plan. The strategy should tell why customers should prefer your products and services over those of competitors. What is distinctive? What will you focus on doing? And what will you not do? The detailed Hoshin process across the company involves planning, communicating horizontally and vertically, 
building consensus, and committing to targets. Toyota creates a 10-year global vision roughly every decade, which is converted into more concrete goals in a five-year business plan and then gets translated into one to three-year breakthrough objectives. The end result of this annual planning is many A3 reports that cascade through the organization and become increasingly focused on specifics the further down in the organization you go. At Toyota, there are two major reviews for the whole company, mid-year and year-end. But there are constant reviews and dialogues throughout the year, including within Toyota's board of directors, which is mostly an internal board led by the president. Most reviews are local in various parts of the organization, from shop floor work groups to engineering product groups to sales groups. In Toyota manufacturing, each level of the management hierarchy from group leaders to the plant manager meets daily in stand-up meetings next to visuals on a board and wall to discuss yesterday, today, and tomorrow and consider overall progress. For Toyota, how you arrive at the decision is as important as the results of the decision. Taking the time and effort to do it right is mandatory. In fact, management will forgive a decision that does not work out as expected if the process used was a good one. A decision that by chance works out well, but was based on a shortcut process, is more likely to lead to a reprimand from the boss. Toyota's secret to smooth and often flawless implementation of new initiatives is careful, upfront planning. Underlying the entire process of planning, problem solving, and decision making is careful attention to every detail. Often part of the planning process is running experiments in a pilot. This behavior is associated with many of the best Japanese firms, and Toyota is a master at it. No stone is left unturned. There are a variety of decision-making methods used at Toyota in different situations. The preferred approach at Toyota to making important decisions is group consensus with management approval. But management reserves the right to seek its own group input and then make and announce a decision. The manager will generally decide only if the group is struggling to develop a consensus and there is an urgent need for a decision. The philosophy is to seek the maximum involvement appropriate for each situation when there is time available and the quality of the decision is important, and to seek the least involvement if there is urgency to the decision or it is a straightforward issue. Getting consensus is done through Nemawashi which translates to, going around the roots, a process of digging around the roots to prepare the tree for transplant. At Toyota, it means gathering broad input from people with a stake or with special knowledge and, in the process, building consensus. Consensus does not mean everybody agrees 100%, but it does mean that everybody's input is considered. It's expected that everyone involved will support the final decision 100%. Thorough consideration in planning and decision making follows a scientific approach that includes five major elements. 1. Understanding the problem or issue and explaining its importance and priority. 2. Understanding the current condition including possible causes for the issue asking why five times three broadly considering alternative approaches and developing a detailed rationale for the preferred approach four building consensus within the team including toyota employees and outside partners five using very efficient communication vehicles to execute steps one through four preferably one side of a sheet of paper this looks like a linear process but there is a great deal of experimentation and feedback loops that make up the essence of the learning process. At Toyota many years ago the A3 report became the standard for telling a story with facts, 
one side of one sheet of paper to tell a story, preferably with figures and diagrams and few words. At Toyota, it is a key tool for Nemawashi, a crisp and clear explanation of the current thinking that is used to get critiques and generate ideas. The A3 is not just a problem-solving report that summarizes what happened, but also the start of a problem-solving process that unfolds over time with give and take with the coach and other stakeholders. The A3 reports are key tools throughout the planning and execution of Hoshin Kunri, including the initial stage of reflecting on the previous year's Hoshin and results. Often people miss the real value of the A3, which is for coaching and developing people. Getting feedback, rethinking, tearing up the A3, and starting over is the real process of developing a way of scientific thinking Toyota works to foster. Technically speaking, Hoshin Kunri focuses on breakthrough objectives led by senior management while the work groups focus on smaller improvements directed toward targets on key performance indicators, KPIs, but at Toyota they are blended together. PDCA starts with a plan to achieve a big step forward from the current condition, often by a cross-functional team. SDCA starts with a standard and seeks to eliminate deviations from the standard through daily improvement by the work group. Toyota developed a conceptual model to illustrate how SDCA and PDCA work together and what happens when one is missing. The model shows a disruptive process of breakthrough changes driven by Hoshin, followed by a period of SDCA, and then gradually working toward KPI targets. It illustrates an important point. When there is a big change, there is a lot of disruption, which means a lot of variation. To reduce the variation and get closer to the standards requires a great deal of SDCA at the front line. At the bottom of this graph is an illustration of what can happen when a company introduces Hoshin Kunri without effective daily management. It looks like the sawtooth effect. A big jump on selected measures to meet the challenge until senior management changes the focus to the next big, new thing, and the initial effort degrades. On the other hand, killer daily management with frontline teams passionately engaged in SDCA will lead to steady improvement, but not the breakthrough architectural change needed to adapt to changing products, technology, and environments. Although learning new skills involves a certain amount of discomfort, it's quite amazing what you can achieve through practicing a practical form of scientific thinking. The more scientific capability you develop in your teams, the more you can empower them to meet challenges that you may have once considered impossible. Managers play a key role in this, because it is their job to create the creators. Thank you for watching and listening. The Toyota Way 14 Management Principles from the World's Greatest Manufacturer by Jeffrey Liker, President of Liker Lean Advisors.
Principle 14. Learn your way to the future through bold strategy, some large leaps, and many small steps. The 4P model consists of number one, philosophy, long-term systems thinking. Number two, process, which is struggle to flow value to each customer. Number three is people, respect, challenge, and grow them. And finally, number four is problem solving, think scientifically to improve towards a desired future. In the center is scientific thinking, which touches all the four Ps. The Chetaway problem solving principles consist of observe deeply and learn iteratively, plan, do, check, act, align goals, and bold strategy, large leaps and small steps. This video is going to focus on the 14th principle of the Toyota Way. Learn your way to the future through bold strategy, some large leaps, and many small steps. Every organization needs a strategy for their products and services that will bring in customers. Each company will need to develop its own strategy based on its own unique circumstances and work toward this vision with some large leaps and many small steps. A strategy consists of a vision, a plan, ideas about the product or service, the target market, the means of delivery, and the service levels. The strategy then needs to be put into action. We also need a strategy for our operations. What capabilities do we need to deliver on our business model? What customers want is a product and or service that connects with them, solves their problems, excites them, makes sense to them, and does something important for them that competitive products or services do not. Toyota's history of growth from startup to global powerhouse has been a challenging journey filled with turns and twists. Internally, Toyota developed the winning culture of the Toyota Way, continually improving in every nook and cranny of the company. Externally, Toyota has largely grown through incremental innovation that is keeping up with competitors in product technology combined with exceptional quality and reliability. There are a few exceptions like the Prius, which paved the way for hybrids worldwide. For Toyota, a well-thought-out strategy and excellent execution are not alternatives, but a necessary combination. Robert Quinn illuminated the world of strategy and how it relates to internal culture in the 1980s with his competing values model. It is a great framework for understanding the relationship between strategy and execution. Quinn began with two dimensions, control versus flexibility, and internal versus external. The concept of control is a characteristic of the mechanistic model, while flexibility is characteristic of the organic model. An external focus is on the environment, while an internal focus is on how a company runs its own operations. Quinn put these together into a two-by-two two table and named each of the four cells. Externally, the company can focus on control, which he calls rational goals, or flexibility, which he calls open systems. Internally, the company can tend toward control, which he calls internal process focus, or flexibility, which is a human relations focus. So the obvious question is which quadrant is best? And the answer is, it depends. First, best depends on the company's strategy and environment. Second, competition among values can be broken 
leading to a paradox where an organization can be seemingly opposite things at once. In fact, some of the most successful organizations are strong in multiple areas. Think of a spider diagram giving you a profile where you can be weak in all areas or strong in all areas or any other combination. Here's a spider diagram to roughly plot the profile of Toyota, Western Auto Companies, and Tesla. Historically, the Western auto industry has been preoccupied with control to the exclusion of flexibility internally and externally. The companies in this industry want rules, structure, people obeying orders, and the freedom to hire and fire people at will. And then the goal externally is to grow, make a profit, and satisfy shareholders. To Western auto companies, lean programs have been attractive not for continuous improvement, but as cost reduction tools within a coercive bureaucracy. The external strategy seems to be make money through high sales and low cost. However, there's a shift in Western auto companies toward more technological innovation in today's major shift to electrical autonomous vehicles, and they're now moving in the direction of open systems pretty aggressively. Toyota is different from these Western companies and has the widest range of any automaker. Internally, continuous improvement for Toyota combines high value added internal processes that appear bureaucratic with strong human relations, which in fact gives them high levels of control plus high levels of flexibility, again a seeming paradox. The control of processes in Toyota is what Paul Adler calls enabling bureaucracy rather than coercive bureaucracy. Externally, Toyota is very good at planning and achieving rational goals, which has fueled 70 years of profitability, including a run of record profits for the industry. The company has had only one year of loss and that was in the Great Recession. Toyota's strategy for the future is bold in many ways, but also pragmatic. Toyota has its share of ventures into the open systems quadrant with the paradigm-breaking Lexus, Prius, and Mirai, and even building its woven city of the future at the foot of Mount Fuji that will act as a living laboratory to experiment with advanced technologies. Long-term thinking for Toyota includes building a highly adaptive learning organization internally at all levels. And innovative thinking at Toyota applies to everyone, even the person attaching the windshield wipers. Not every company can act like a startup, but it is critical that the internal capabilities and external challenges are well aligned. The open systems quadrant is the area Akio Toyota has been working hardest at to strengthen through a variety of technology partnerships and internal advanced research organizations. Speed and innovation are critical in this time of revolutionary change in the auto industry. On the other hand, Tesla is firmly ensconced in the open systems quadrant while doing just enough to build and distribute product in the other three quadrants. It is relatively unidimensional and weaker every place Toyota is strong. Fortunately, or more likely by plan, Tesla is strong in the one area that really matters for Elon Musk's strategy and style of leadership. He deserves credit in the human relations quadrant for hiring exceptional engineers who have done a great job of innovating. Elon Musk certainly thinks long term and has a vision well beyond earning a paycheck. And the core technology and features of Tesla's battery electric vehicles that customers love and have fun driving have disrupted the industry in a way that all legacy automakers are racing to catch up.
At the end of the chapter, I provide tips for strategy development and execution for other companies that are not Toyota. The first is develop your own strategy based on your products, services, markets, and unique situation. This is not a game of copying. Second, the competing values framework is a useful way to map your future strategy to strike an appropriate balance between external and internal flexibility and control. The question should not be which quadrant is best, but rather what capabilities does your organization need to be successful in the future, considering your risk threshold, the market you face, trends in technology in your field, the broader environment, and what you think will excite your customers. The strategic vision starts in the external environment portion of the competing values model. Then there's the internal portion. How developed do you need to be in execution? Is the delivery of your products and services a differentiator? Do you need flexible people continually improving toward excellence? Or is a moderate level of internal control enough for now? Third, do not fall into the trap of thinking that just because you have a well-articulated strategy with informative figures and charts, you're done. In fact, you've only started. The difference between developing the strategy and executing against it is like night and day. The vision is just that, a vision. Based on our best guesses about the future, we will not really know what is going to happen until it happens. The execution should be done in bite-sized pieces, learning from each experiment. Mike Rother's model connects strategy to the step-by-step -step learning approach of the improvement kata. What is your long-term strategic vision for your product or service? What competencies and distinctive processes are needed to support delivery? For the shorter term, say one to three years, what are the concrete challenges you need to take on to move in the direction of that strategy? That then bounces you to the current condition. What are your current competencies, strengths, and weaknesses? Then identify not all, but the first of your short-term target conditions and experiment toward that and so on. Akio Toyota, current president of Toyota Motor Company, was asked about how Toyota is managing through the various crises that we face. He said, the number one thing I've learned and that I am prioritizing for my learning is that I am not panicking. I am managing the company very efficiently and stably. In managing the company during these past 10 years, no years were peaceful. Every year, year on year, we have witnessed and experienced a large drastic change on the scale of a one in a hundred year event. So I think that the calmer I am, the calmer things are within the company. The Toyota Way, 14 Management Principles from the World's Greatest Manufacturer, by Jeffrey Liker, President of Liker Lean Advisors. This is the final chapter. Conclusion, be thoughtful and evolve your enterprise.
in the science fiction book called Prentice Alvin by Orson Scott Card. His main character, Alvin Maker, could with his mind sense weaknesses in the connection between atoms and then manipulate the atoms to fix the problem like curing breaks in bones and repairing damaged iron, iron parts. He observed people who worked well together smoothly like they knew each other's next move. He almost laughed out loud thinking, thousands of people knowing each other that well, moving to fit each other just right, working together. Who could stand in the way of such people? The lesson and secret of the Toyota Way is just as clear as this. It creates bonds among individuals and partners such that they are, as Orson Scott Card said, moving to fit each other just right, working together toward a common goal. The total management system is not a small thing to learn from. I'm actually asking your organization's leadership to learn to think longer term through systems thinking, to focus on a clear purpose for society and customers, develop lean processes, blow up your culture and make it more people-centered, and develop leaders who understand the Gemba, think scientifically, and teach others. I also want you to engage all employees in continuous improvement develop value stream partnerships, and let strategy and deployed goals guide your improvement activities. It's a lot to take in. Fortunately, you don't have to do this quickly in a single step. And this image is a future vision to strive for, not something you can quickly implement. And it needs to be crafted to be your vision, not a knockoff of Toyota. I have observed a comfortable tendency toward mechanistic implementation. Many companies try to rapidly force fit lean tools into their operations, thinking they are copying Toyota. Trying to motivate managers with extrinsic rewards and punishments only means they will comply, not lead. Toyota Sensei, when they work with outside companies, use a different approach. They start more slowly in a small model area, sometimes called a lighthouse project, and they put managers in charge from the beginning. They act as teachers challenging, asking questions, and then expect the local managers to struggle to figure out what to do next at each step. Their goal is to develop the people who directly lead the value-added workers. Successful struggle with some failures along the way is a great thing for learning. It is certainly comfortable not to struggle using a mechanistic approach, but that will not lead to anything even approaching excellence, and it's not the reality of what TPS is supposed to be, which is an organic process, a way of thinking, a management philosophy, a focus on total customer service, and an environment of teamwork and improvement. It's evolutionary, and you need to evolve your system, not try to cut and paste Toyota's system. What I've seen actually work well in practice is approaching lean deployment scientifically. Based on facts and data, learning as you go with a compass but no roadmap. It's what Toyota calls Plan, Do, Check, Act or PDCA. And it's a continual process of improvement, step by step, experimenting at every step. Toyota Kata is a way that Mike Rother developed to help managers coach their team members to think more scientifically through deliberate practice and corrective feedback from the coach. There are a set of Kata, small routines, 
that you develop as a habit for both learning to improve and learning to coach. Imagine a continuous improvement leader who has experience with real TPS, was trained in Toyota Kata, and is given the assignment to transform a plant to lean and get some specific results. Rather than charge off and start implementing solutions, she would step back and approach it scientifically using something like the Improvement Kata model. In Mike Rother's Improvement Kata, you start with a challenge. What are we really trying to accomplish with lean transformation? What's our long-term vision? What would success look like one year out? And how would we measure it? Number two, what is the current condition? Where are we now in our processes and people? In step three, we develop the next target condition, a smaller step, and the obstacles to that target condition. Let's get started, but not follow a laid out plan to the challenge. Rather, let's break down the challenge into small steps, one bite at a time. We'll work toward the next target condition by overcoming obstacles. When we reach this, we can then reflect, define our next target condition, and so on. Number four is when we start to act, the fun part. What's the next experiment I will run to overcome an obstacle? Experiment, reflect and learn from each experiment, and have some fun. We often think of the challenge statement as a big financial result, but the more difficult challenge is developing the capability of people. I hear so many times from Toyota leaders something like, process improvement and people development go hand in hand. Toyota Kata focuses the learner on process improvement following a step-by-step -step process, a meta skill, and as they do this, they develop the scientific thinking ability, which then becomes a habit. The evil of entropy and how to beat it. Organizational entropy, a tendency toward decay of systems, will naturally cause regression from any new improved state because it requires more energy than the old steady state. The old steady state is more natural and easier to sustain. Lean transformation pulls the organization out of its steady state. Then like a rubber band, if we let go, it snaps back to its steady state. Then like pulling on a rubber band, if we let go, it snaps back to its steady state. Contrary to the notion that lean processes fix problems, the truth is they reveal problems and place a higher burden on leaders, managers, and team members to keep on improving. When we make big changes quickly, we throw people and processes out of a stable state, and the new processes will have many unanticipated weaknesses. Our new processes at this point are still a tentative desired state. For example, when Toyota launches a new vehicle model in a plant, they expect many problems and depend on each work group to resolve these issues through Kaizen. The positive energy to counteract entropy comes from work groups improving and taking ownership of the new standards, as well as continuously identifying and correcting deviations from the standards as conditions change and more is learned. In this model, we see the advantage of piloting new technologies or new ideas in a small area first to learn what happens when they bump against reality. Run the experiment and study what happens. The new approach can then be spread gradually from work group to work group. This creates a very different dynamic from mechanistic top-down management. 
one of having local control rather than having change imposed from senior management and lean specialists coming around to do all the thinking. I have personally participated in many lean transformation efforts and witnessed many others. All too often, a great and exciting start peters out. Some of the reasons for this include one, lack of senior management commitment. Senior executives delegate lean down to continuous improvement specialists, but are nowhere to be found at the Gemba and wait for the results to bubble up. Number two, changing of the guard. More than once when we did have an enthusiastic CEO and thought, this is the one. The CEO soon was pushed out and a new one brought in who had a mechanistic view of lean to get quick financial results. The party was over. Number three, political jockeying. Great things were happening at the Gemba while staff specialists in departments like quality and HR, who were far from the Gemba, were plotting to take over lean. Number four, great pilots. Then quickly the order came to go live everywhere at once. Too often when executives see the results, say for one value stream of one plant, they multiply the expected benefits across operations and order the lean folks to make it happen by the end of the year. Number five, little or no focus on developing desired skills and mindset. The transformation is viewed as a technical problem rather than also a process of developing lean mindset in all their people. The recurring theme is that even when starting out strong organically, things will go bad if the executive level sees lean implementation as an independent variable. The consultants and the internal managers are ordered to do lean, independent variable, get results, the dependent variable, or else. This is far from systems thinking. A better model is to strive for appropriate lean systems, a vision, the dependent variable, then take a scientific approach, the independent variable, and then coming out of this over the long term will be competitive advantage and profits. I don't mean to be a downer, there are still many examples in the second edition of the Toyota Way of companies working to build a culture of excellence for the long term that have had staying power. There are differences in the specifics of how they approach their transformations, but all used a similar pattern. Number one, they started with a pilot and a challenge of some sort and deployed incrementally and thoughtfully without going too fast for people to absorb, what we call a scientific approach. They thought long-term and had a vision of excellence through a Toyota-like philosophy. They focused on the learning of internal managers, mostly with and sometimes without external consultants who acted as coaches rather than experts with all the answers. Number four, they took an experimental learning approach rather than an implementation approach. Number five, in some way, they created a coaching culture with regular feedback so that a disciplined way of acting and approaching problems became habitual. Number six, they maintained continuity of lean leadership by developing and retaining leaders. And finally, number seven, maybe the most important, they provide job security and will not lay off employees because of Kaizen. Getting to the root cause of success, cultural change. 
The toughest and most basic challenge for companies that want to learn from Toyota is how to create an aligned organization of individuals who each have the DNA of the organization and are continually learning together to add value to the customer. Culture is all about people sharing values, beliefs, and ways of approaching problems. To really understand the culture, you have to dig deeper in the Gemba than what you see on the surface to see if individuals are changing the way they are thinking and acting. The Toyota Way has a depth that goes down to the most basic level of assumptions about the most effective way to perceive, think, and feel in relation to problems. The Toyota Way is explicitly taught in the way that you should transmit culture through action in day-to-day -day work where leaders model the way and coach. Building culture through kata starts with a focus on mindset and behavior and only through a long process of repeated practice can you create a culture of scientific thinkers. At the core of any successful cultural change effort is mutual trust. If team members don't trust managers, or if managers don't trust team members, the words of continuous improvement and respect for people will be empty. Mutual trust comes from actions, not merely words. Jane Basita, former vice president of Toyota Motor Sales explained, the Toyota Way matches everything that they do, team members, every hour of the day. So they are swimming in this culture, in this philosophy. We're always doing Kaizen projects. It's a part of who we are. Your organization may not yet be swimming in the culture you desire. So it'll take more work over years to get to the point where people enter a strong, positive culture and immediately begin to get socialized into it. It will take dedication, hard work, and consistency of your vision of excellence. The first step is simply get started. Plan, think, and do. Then keep thinking and doing and reflecting. Good luck on your journey to excellence.